Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss one of the most common financial statement analyses that's performed, and that is the earnings per share calculation. Now, before I deep dive into this slide, let me just say, please don't be intimidated by the amount of information here. Um, earnings per share has a lot of moving parts, and those parts come from various sections of the financial statements. And on top of that, the company tends to do a lot of the work for you. So here I've just collected a lot of financial information. This is all from AT&T's 2019 10K. And, and I've basically collected all the various places where they have displayed the information that you might need or that they might help you with in calculating earnings per share. So don't be overwhelmed. Um, I'm, I'm going to kind of walk you through the various pieces as we go. But first of all, um, what exactly is earnings per share? Well, the name kind of gives it away. It's the earnings of the company or the net income of the company, not as a total, but per share of stock in the company. Okay, and the formula is over here in the right hand corner. Um, earnings per share equals net income. Net income is an easy one, it comes straight from the income statement. Minus preferred dividends over average common shares outstanding. Now, here's where I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to kind of explain each of these pieces in detail and show you where you find this information because. When most students learn earnings per share, it's at a point in their accounting courses where they haven't even gone into the details of what it means to be preferred, what a dividend is, what it means to be common shares outstanding, how you're supposed to average them together. Like there's things in this equation that most students don't understand at surface level. And so I'm gonna walk you through some of those pieces, but I'm also gonna show you how it's okay if you don't understand those pieces. If you know the formula, the information will be at your fingertips to do the math. Um, first of all, net income comes from the bottom of the income statement, usually the last line officially of the income statement. And so I have a clipping of the bottom of AT&T's income statement right here, um, starting with income before taxes. And then notice there's net income 14,975. Now, this, these numbers are in um, uh, millions, so this is actually 14,975. Um, now, there's a caveat here, and you have to be, pay attention to this, is in AT&T's case, notice they have net income, and then right below it, they have an adjustment. It says net income attributable to non-controlling interest. In other words, there's another company that has an ownership stake in AT&T, and so some of this net income belongs to them. It doesn't belong to AT&T. And so you take the net income, you subtract out the non-controlling interest, and notice there's another line that says net income, what we're looking for, specifically the portion that belongs to AT&T, 13,903. So when we think about our calculations, earnings per share equals net income, we want the income for AT&T, because that's whose financial statements we're looking at, 13,903, and as I said, these are written in millions, so that's 13,903,000,000. So that's our net income. And from that, we have to subtract our preferred dividends. So what does that mean to subtract preferred dividends? Well, first of all, dividends are earnings that the company has given back to investors, okay? So we know that this is something about giving money back to investors. Preferred dividends, specifically, are the dividends that are given back to the preferred stockholders as opposed to the common stockholders, two different classifications of stock. Now, the reason we're going to subtract this is because, and, and this is going beyond the scope of what you really need to know for, for earnings per share, but preferred stockholders are to some extent similar to a debt holder. So their dividends are kind of like an interest payment. And frankly, um, anything that they get paid isn't available for the common shareholders to obtain. So therefore, yes, the company earned some net income, but then it gave some of that money to the preferred shareholders, making that inaccessible for the common shareholders. Therefore, we're going to subtract that out. We're going to adjust for it. Now, if we look down here below our income statement, there is a little clip that says preferred stock dividends, three. And so I am going to take that. Remember, again, this is in millions. So I'm going to take that three out of there. So that takes care of our numerator, net income minus preferred dividends. And now I have to divide this whole thing by average common shares outstanding. All right, let's break down the terms. First of all, common shares. So that's shares of your common stock. 
And if you look at the shareholders equity section of your balance sheet, which I've got clipped right here, you can find information about the shares of stock. And specifically, we're looking for the common stock. So there's the common stock. It tells us 14 million are authorized. That's meaningless to us right now. That just means how much stock can the company issue? And I said, I'm sorry, I said million, that's 14 billion. That's how much the company can issue to stockholders, but that's not what the stockholders actually have. Then it tells you that 7.6 billion have been issued and that amount applies to both December 31, 2019 and December 31, 2018. But here's the deal. Stock that has been issued is not the same as stock that is outstanding. And remember, we're looking for stock outstanding for our formula. So again, this is beyond the scope of what you need to know for earnings per share. I'm gonna show you a lot of this information has been given to you by AT&T. You don't actually need to calculate it, but for those interested and for those who wanna get an advanced preview, if you're not aware of how stock works yet, um, let me just walk through the motions here. Stock that is issued means you've sold it to investors at some point. Stock that is outstanding is still in the hands of investors. What's the difference between the two? Well, the company, in this case AT&T, can buy back its own stock. And when a company does that, it's called treasury stock. So again, if we look at the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet, you will see right here that AT&T says that they do have about 366, depending on what you're look, you look at, million shares of treasury stock, stock they've bought back from investors. So if you want to know what's outstanding, how many shares are investors' hands, you have to take that issued amount and subtract out the amount that AT&T has bought back. That'll give you the outstanding stock, okay? But you need an average. You don't want just how much outstanding stock was there at the end of the year. You want to know on average at any given time in the year how much outstanding stock was there. Because when you're calculating earnings per share, it shouldn't just be what was earnings per share on January 1 or say on June 30th or on December 31. It should be on average throughout the year because remember the income statement covers a whole year. What was the earnings per share? So the easiest way to calculate average, it's the most simple way, is to simply calculate last year's number, this year's number, add them together, divide by two, okay? And you could do that here because you have the issued stock for both years and you have the treasury stock for both years. So you could figure out the outstanding stock for both years by taking the difference. You could add those together and divide by two and that would give you the average common shares outstanding um, across those years. And that would be your denominator. Now you see I haven't written any numbers down. And the reason for that is twofold. One, that's a lot of math to do for such a simple equation. Two, it goes way beyond the scope of what students are expected to know when they're first introduced to earnings per share. And I said twofold, I guess I should have said threefold. And three, because AT&T did that math for us already. Um, the thing is, we can do that crude average, beginning, ending, divide by two. But AT&T knows actually what was the average amount of stock outstanding at any given time during the year, not just beginning, ending, divided by two. They know every time the stock ownership changed, and therefore they can calculate a more accurate number than us. And if you look on the left side of the slide here, I have footnote number two that says earnings per share. And AT&T has actually calculated for us denominators Weighted average number of common shares outstanding, 7319. So we don't have to do that math. They did that math for us. And in fact, they've done the entire earnings per share calculation for us, and many companies will. But we still need to learn it, and we still need to go through the motions of how you pull the information in case you need to calculate it. Um, yourself. But this is it. We've got our net income. We figured out our preferred dividends and the company had already calculated the common shares outstanding for us. We do that math and we're going to get to approximately $1.90 earnings per share. And if you look at AT&T's calculations over here at the bottom of the income statement, they actually did calculate that for us, $1.90. And if you look over here in the notes, um, the note for earnings per share, they did calculate that for us, $1.90. Don't worry about the other one given, the dilution number, that's a much more advanced topic. I'm not going into that now. Um, and um, so that's it. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that 
the company had $1.90 in earnings for every share of stock that was in a common stockholder's possession, okay? Now, what number are you looking for? Well, there is no given number that you're looking for. There's usually an expectation of the market. So in the case of AT&T this year, had the market expected, say, $1.70 earnings per share, and AT&T really only delivered $1.90, the market would be happy. Investors would say, oh, they beat my expectations. On the other hand, if investors had expected, say, $2 per share and they only got $190, investors would say, oh, they did not meet my expectations. And typically buying and selling activity ensues depending on whether a company met or failed to meet expectations. By the way, earnings per share, you might have already figured this out, but because it has to do with earnings and because it's focused on the income statement, earnings per share is in fact a profitability ratio it's telling you about how much money or how much profit the company made all right that is a lot to take in for earnings per share and it's really a lot to take in one because there's a whole lot of data that you can pull from different points in the financial statements and two again because students are are usually introduced to this before they have a solid understanding of the components that go into it. But just remember, net income comes from the bottom of the income statement. Preferred dividends will be listed somewhere by the company in the financials that you can just pull that number. And more likely than not, the company has calculated its weighted average shares outstanding for you, in which case you can pull that number as well. Just do your math with your three given numbers. You've got EPS and you're good to go. Hope you found this helpful. Hope you join me for another video.